Hey, it's Tommy Gun from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and I'm going to show you how to import tile sets and use DLC in RPG Maker VX Ace. So, if you have Steam or the standalone version of RPG Maker, it's the same process, um, but I'll go over both. There are just minor differences basically in where stuff is installed. Um, I'm using the standalone here, but um, a lot of people buy the Steam version and then they buy some DLC and then they wonder where it is. Why isn't it just in your project? Uh, you know, where are the tile sets that you just bought? Well, it's not actually as simple as just having it be there automatically or even like clicking a button to import it. You actually have to do a little bit of work um, to set it up, especially for tile sets. For stuff like music, it's a bit easier. But so first of all, um, you want to find where stuff is installed. And so there are two things you want to know. Um, well, I guess three. You want to know where your DLC or resource packs, as they're called everywhere else, um, it's just called DLC because it's Steam. Um, you know, normally you wouldn't call it that uh, on any other site. Um, but so there's the, your DLC, then there's the RTP, which is called uh, the runtime package. And that's the default graphics that come installed, which I'll get to in a minute. And then there's your actual project file. So every every game you create with RPG Maker, every project you're working on has a separate folder. And so you actually have to import your tile sets into each project if you want to use them. It's not, this isn't something where you just import it into the program itself and then it's there for all your games. You actually have to do it per project. And there's sort of a reason for that. It's because you kind of mix and match things. And so, you know, you're not necessarily using the exact same files for each project. Um, and so this gives you more flexibility in things. But uh, so here's so by default, your project is installed under probably your documents folder, but you can inst you can uh, save it anywhere you want. Um, and so you may need to search for where you saved it um, for the Steam stuff. It's wherever you have Steam installed and then slash Steam apps common RPG VX Ace. And for the standalone version, it's under pro program files, common files in our brain. Um, you can see it right here. That's for the RTP. Um, your, for your quote unquote DLC, that's just wherever you happen to save it when you bought it. So if you buy it from the official store, then you can save it anywhere you want. So I can't tell you where you saved it. Um, for Steam, an easy way to find that folder is to actually go to Steam and go to your library and you'll have games, then you'll have software and it's under software. So click on RPG Maker, right click, go to properties, local files, and then browse local files. And if you click that button, then it pops up that folder. And so now you have all your stuff here. You have your DLC folder and you have your RTP. Um, and don't worry about the rest of that stuff. Uh, I already have this open in another folder over here. So here is my folder here. And then this side on the right, this is my project file. And actually I should back up a little bit. So here's my empty project that I created. And so you'll see that I have like audio. So if I have uh, DLC music, I can drag it over into the background music and then it'll appear there. Um, but I'm gonna focus on graphics here. So I'm going to go into this D, uh, the DS pack and each of these DLC packs is a little bit different in the way that they're set up. Um, some of them have sample maps like they have here. Some of them, you know, the folder structure is just, it's different. So, you know, you can read the readme files and things or just search around in the folders and you wanna just find uh, whatever it is you're looking for, whether it's audio or graphics or something. So I'm gonna go into characters and I have my, my characters folder here, which is empty. So I'll just drag highlight some of these and just copy them over into this. And now if I go over here, you've got your resource manager here. This is another way you can do it. If you click on resource manager, you can see all these folders here and these blue dots mean that's the RTP. And if I go to characters, you'll see that there are some red dots now and those are those files that I just dragged over. And you can also click import. So if you find this way easier, go ahead and click import and you can um, just browse to your DLC folder and import the things this way. I just like to drag it between the folders because I always have them open anyway. 
So I'm going to go to my database to change my character. And so on the very first tab for actors, I'm going to double click here. And now you can see I have all these characters to choose from. And I have a separate video on sprite formatting. So if you want to know uh, exactly what like these symbols mean here, like why there's a dollar sign in front of these and stuff, or like how to use larger characters and things, check out my sprite formatting video because that goes really in depth in that stuff. But if you're just using DLC, uh, it's probably named correctly. You can probably just drag it over and it'll work. And so I'll just um, click on this guy for my character. And so now my character changed. And so it's actually pretty easy to install things like characters and audio and stuff like that. It'll just appear and you'll be able to use it basically right away. Um, without having to do anything else. So that stuff is pretty simple. But for tile sets, it's a different story. Uh, if we go back into here and go over to the tile sets tab, you'll see that you have these four tile sets that are here by default. So let's change the maximum so we can add some and you know, whatever, it doesn't matter what I put. Um, so I'll just create a new one here called whatever. And it's completely empty. And you can right click and copy and paste and ha you know just copy the tile set over and then change some settings if you want, um, if it's an existing thing that you already have in your game. Um, of course, this is I'm using brand new tiles and things, so I can't do that. And so let's back up here and go to tile sets and go to tile sets here. And now you'll see, in this case, I have different folders for each of the tiles. Um, so you'll see here we have the A tiles, which are auto tiles, and it gives you a little hint about what it is, animation, ground, buildings. And I have a whole separate video on auto tiles. If you want to know all about those and how to format those and how to create your own, um, it's kind of complicated. So check out that video if you want. It's um, not something I'm going to go into here. but uh, then we have the B, C, D, and E. And so you can put one image in each of these slots. And you can put whatever you want here. Um, like you can use like a dungeon, you know, so we've got the dungeon tiles here. So I could use the dungeon A1 tiles, but then I could use the interior A2 tiles if I wanted to or whatever. Um, so it gives you the freedom and you can set up as many tile sets you want, but you are limited in putting one image per uh, slot there. Uh, other DLC you'll find has all the tile sets, all, all the images all in one folder rather than breaking them up into folders like this. But the, the images themselves should be named with that in there. And even in this case, it's still named, which is good. So it still says tile A1. So you can click on these, of course, and check out what they are. So this is the exterior tile. So I like that. So I'm just going to copy this over into my tile sets folder. And, um, you know, we can do all of these if we want. Here's a forest tile. Copy that over. And then I'll copy one of the B tiles over. Let's find a good one. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do this one. Exterior forest. So copy that one over. And of course, normally you would copy one from every every one of these folders, or you know, you copy all of them over if you want. Um, but then, in here, you would use one of each. But I'm going to be quick about this, and I'm just going to uh, just do these three. So I clicked on A1. So you make sure you match those up. And A2, get that one that I grabbed, and then the B tile. And so again, you'll notice that there's red dots here indicating that those are imported and they're not part of the RTP. So now you'll see that it shows up here. And so I have a B tab and an A tab. So all the A images all get put into one tab, but then there's a separate tab for these other ones for B, C, D, and E if I had put them in. And you'll notice that they have some X's and O's on them. Um, which I will mention in a second. Then there's also this mode here, area type, field type, and VX compatible. And I'm not really going to go into that, but you can pause the video here and read this. This is from the Steam tutorial um, thread uh, that kind of briefly explains it. 
and that you don't really have to worry about this so much right now. Um, I would just leave it on area. So uh, now we have our first tile set set up partially and now we want to actually use that so I'm going to right click on my actual map and go to properties and now I'm going to choose that tile set that I just made whatever and I'll make it a little bit bigger just for the heck of it and make sure I'm on the drawing uh, let's put some grass down have like a little uh, let's do a little fence around here and if you don't know what I'm doing, don't worry about it. Um, I have some other videos that go over all of this. Uh, I, have, I have a whole set of beginner videos, so if, if you want to know what all the other stuff in the program is, if, if you're new to RPG Maker, check out those videos, because I go over pretty much every button. Some of it's redundant that I'm going, going over here, but you can jump around there, chapter links for that. So I'm not sure what all these tiles even are, so I'll just like throw some down here. And then we'll go to the B tile and let's throw a tree in here and put a palm tree over here. And that's fine. So now I'm going to play test the game. So save my changes. And you'll notice something a little weird, which is that it is working and I do have my new character, but I can walk over everything right now and that's not right. So let's go back to the database. So that's where all this stuff comes in and that's why this is not such a quick process as you might think. It's because you have to actually set all your passability settings. So here we have passage and this is just the basic part with the X's and O's. X means I can't walk on it, so that's like water and things. Um, and then the O's mean I can walk on it. So one problem is here, I can just click. You can just click to cycle through things. Um, on the A tab, you just have the two, X and O. Um, so I want an X there, meaning I can't walk through this fence. But the other stuff is fine, I do want to walk on that. And then the B tab, um, I want to change this stuff. I don't want to be able to walk through this. Uh, I'm just going to keep this pretty simple here, and um, I think that's the graphic I used. So now if you click again, you'll get a star. And so I'm going to make the top of this stars. You probably actually want to make the size of this star. Well, I can do that, I guess. Um, this might look a little bit weird. Not sure. Uh, and then this graphic. Or did I not use that one? <laughs> I've already forgotten what I put down. Uh, here we go. This palm tree. Let's do that. So now the star, if you hover, it'll give you this little hint about what it is. That's partly going off the screen. Um, so zero means passable, or uh, O means passable, and X means impassable. And uh, I guess it doesn't actually even mention the star in there. Uh, but the star means you can walk under it, so it kind of floats over you. And make sure this top left on the B tab, make sure that's a star. You'll see that it had a star in the actual file just to remind you to put a star there. Um, and it should be a star by default anyway. So just make sure you don't change that. If you do, it'll screw up everything um, just for technical reasons, uh, the way that the layering system works. So just make sure that that's right. Um, then you've got these other tabs for setting up ladders. And again, you can just click to make it a ladder or not make it a ladder. I don't uh, think there is a ladder on here, so I won't do that. But the ladder, uh, if you hover, it just makes it look like you're, it, it just keeps the character looking away, you know, away from the screen or up. And so it looks like they're walking up and down the ladder. Um, then there's a bush attribute that you can put on here. So again, just toggles on and off. And so that just sort of makes the, your feet transparent, so it looks like you're walking through tall grass or something like that. A counter is like a countertop. So if you are like at a bar, um, a pub, and, or there's some sort of countertop, um, like at an inn, a lot of the time in RPGs, they, there's like some inn and there's somebody on the other side of a counter and you can talk to them across the counter. Normally you'd have to be standing right next to them, but if you have a counter 
uh, tag on that tile, uh, which I don't have a counter in, in this set right now. Actually, I think there are over here, um, counter. So yeah, you'll see that these ones are set as counters. That's what that icon means. Uh, that means if I just put one tile across, then it'll let me talk across it to a person. If I do more than one um, tile width, then it won't let me talk to them. So if it's like a large table, I can't talk across it. It has to be one, one tile only. Um, and damage floor, so if there's like a swamp or spikes or something that when you walk on it, it gives you damage. And then don't worry about the terrain tag, that's a different thing. Uh, you're not going to be using that right now. So now that I should have all of this, secretary, oh, and passage four directional, you can set things. So you'll see here, uh, and this is what you might need to do over here is make it so you can't walk a certain way. So like this only lets you walk just in the direction that the arrows show. So like sometimes you can only walk up and down through some tile or left and right, you know, depending on what the graphic is. In this case, uh, I don't know that there's really any, but it also might help with these uh, trees and things. So let's play test this. I may not have actually needed to do that on that tree, I don't know. Um, so now you'll see I can't, I'm trying to walk through this fence and it doesn't work, but if I walk up and around this, you'll see now I'm behind the tree. So it actually looks better now, um, or better than if I just put X's there. If I put X's, I, would, I could only get this close to it and it wouldn't even let me go down here because I'd be on top of it. Um, but now it's actually floating above me, so that looks more realistic. And then you'll see with this tree, I can kind of walk around it. Um, so it maybe looks a little weird right there. Um, it's up to you what you want to do if you want to let your character go under it there or not. So that actually looks a little bit more uh, realistic and things. And so that's the basics of that. Uh, one thing that a lot of these DLC packs expect you to do is to actually like mix and match uh, the actual, uh, like each file, like I said, you can only have one image in each slot here, but you can cut and paste them. Like if you, you have to use Photoshop or GIMP or something like that. Um, but like I could take some of the tiles from this exterior set and some from the dungeon or whatever and and mix them together in Photoshop and then import them in here so that it would only take up one slot because there is a limited amount of space, unfortunately. Um, so that's one reason that uh, they might make you go through all this work is because they don't know what tiles you're actually going to want to use in your game. And so you might want to be chopping it up and, and putting things in, in different places. Now, I mentioned that there are these sample maps, and this is actually a whole game folder, a project folder, so it has the game EXE and everything. And so if you open this up, which I have open in another copy of RPG Maker, uh, you'll see all these sample maps that they have here, and, um, and this just gives you a good idea of how these are supposed to be used. You know, sometimes it's a little hard to tell, like, you know, what that wall is used for, or what that object is supposed to be, or whatever. Um, so these sample maps can help. And you'll see, and you can actually run this, although I don't know that there's much coded into this. Um, and so you'll see here that this is all sort of so much empty spaces put into this, into these files. And so that's why even though I could go into this, these tile sets and copy these and paste them into my project, uh, you know, you wouldn't want to because it has all this empty space and you don't want to waste all that space. So he clearly just made these just for demonstration purposes and not for you to actually use, uh, which is unfortunate that <laughs> they didn't just make some, make some with the tile sets uh, just sort of as they are by default, just so you could maybe easily copy and paste them in, but 
Um, now, one other thing is that I mentioned the RTP. So if I go over to RTP, you'll notice that my tile sets tab um, here, my folder, only has those ones that I imported, but it doesn't have any of these the ones up here, like the field or the exterior ones. And so where those are stored are in the RTP. So if you go to the graphics and you go to tile sets, now you'll see all those files. But you don't want to just modify these here um, because this is like a universal folder for all your projects. Um, and so what you want to do is if you do want to modify some of those, you can just copy these over into your tile set. Um, I'm not going to do that now. And then you can modify them. You should also, if you're doing it with tile sets, you'd probably want to change the name just so you don't get confused um, when you're working with your project, which one was your, your modified tile set and which one was the RTP and stuff. Um, so you can just copy this over and then uh, you can edit these or mix them together or whatever. It's just one thing to keep in mind is that with these files, there is a preset size for the, the whole file can be. So you can't just extend this and add tiles to it, unfortunately. There's only so many like spots in there for tiles. And uh, one important thing that you actually probably will want to copy from the RTP, um, you know, if you're using all these DLC tile sets and stuff, then maybe you're never going to actually use the, the RTP stuff. But in this graphic system folder, which is not to be confused with this system folder here, um, here's my, you know, the main folder for my project. So I have this system folder, which is not what I want, but under graphics system, um, that's what this folder is. This has the balloon icons and it has uh, the window skin and then the icon set. So you'll see all the icons here. So if you wanna change your icons, then you'll want to copy this file over or you can, I mean, you could just make one from scratch. Um, just make sure it's named. These need to be named the same. So make sure that these names are exactly the same when you copy them over or if you create your own. Um, with the icon set, you can actually make it longer though. So you aren't limited to that size. So that's good. But the rest of the things you should keep as the same size and I think that about does it. Um, you know, a lot of these things, like I said, are easy to copy over, like faces and characters and things, um, parallax backgrounds, and just the tile sets that require that extra work. So I hope this cleared that up. If you have any questions, you, know, you can always ask on the forums or check out other tutorials. And like I said, I have a whole beginner series, a three-part beginner series, it's two hours long, um, going over every part of this program. So check that out. I have an auto tile video. I have an, a video on sprite formatting. So if you need more help on this stuff, then check those out. A lot of these videos, like my beginner series, has chapter links in the description. So you can just jump around it. Um, you know, some of this stuff is going to be redundant, but. Um, check that stuff out and then I have other tutorials for you know actually coding some stuff in the game and not just about graphics and things so I hope that helped thanks for watching